Welcome. I've kind of avoided talking about Phase 3 of the Ashgardian Restoration, since it's pretty much the same as Phase 2, but I'm making this for the sake of completion, and since the final phase is coming in 5.4, I'll cover some of the differences and some of the new items. You should watch my guides to Phase 1 and 2 if you want some real information on this. I can confirm that you can start if you have a level 20 crafter or a level 10 gatherer. I was wrong about needing to do inscrutable tastes to participate. However, you do need to complete it as well as Go West Craftsman in Mordona to unlock the Elto L2 El Tau custom deliveries. More on this later. Also, with the recent upgrade, you should be able to participate in the restoration on a trial account. However, you will not be able to gather or craft the higher level items, so earning scripts will be slow at best. You might notice a new face in the firmament. The face of the firmament can teleport you to St. Roel's Dais, which will be helpful if you are working on the Elto custom deliveries. Also notice that Eni's inventory has been organized into three sections. More on this later. The fates, or concerted efforts, are the same except they just take place in the new areas. Also there was a ranking period, but that's over now. Still, the bulk of the gathering is done in the diadem, and all works pretty much the same, except botanist and miner paths do go in opposite directions now. Mining went clockwise, and now goes counterclockwise. Botany went counterclockwise, and now goes clockwise. You can still get some of the Phase 2 materials, seemingly just to complete older achievements. These do not give scripts, but do give sky builder points. The monsters are recolored and renamed, but they still drop the same types of mats, either botany or mining, but they are all grade 3 now. For some reason, the default weather in the diadem is now heat wave. Is this a subtle statement about global warming? But the special weather events are still pretty much the same. One other difference is that phase 3 items can be inspected in sets of 5, while phase 2 items still require 10. There are new recipes in the crafting log, all designated Grade 3, and are found under Restoration 3 under Ishgardian Restoration. You can still craft and turn in both Grade 1 and Grade 2 items, but most of the mats can no longer be gathered, the exceptions being the Level 80 and the Level 80 Expert Grade 2 recipes, which are also the only old ones that give any Sky Builder points. You will get no more than three scripts for any of the old items, and no Koopa of Fortune stamps. Some reasons you might do these is to get rid of old materials, um, and I guess to work on Phase 2 achievements. As I said, Eni's inventory is now divided into three sections. All the Phase 1 and 2 items are still available, as well as several new items, and also a few that were previously only available from the Koopa of Fortune. The first section, Sky Builder Scripts, contains all the learnable or collectible items, like mounts, minions, hairstyles, etc. The Megalotragus Horn is the new mount that many have compared to Tallbucks from World of Warcraft. Ballroom Etiquette Uncouth Congratulations is the High Five emote, and Modern Aesthetics Saintly Style is another shortish hairstyle, again not available to Vera or Hrothgar. The Cheerful Checkered Parasol is yet another umbrella. I should mention that umbrellas are now in the Fashion Accessories window under the Character menu. The Heaven's Ward Orchestron Roll, which supposedly was available years ago during a Rising event, so for most people this is new. The Alto card will become available after you complete the Alto custom deliveries. The Well Bred Emote, the Sky Blue Parasol, and four Orchestron Rolls that were rewards from the Coupo of Fortune are now available for purchase. The second section is for gear and furnishings, and is the only one that uses two tabs, armor for all the previous clothing items, no new things under there, and others for the housing items. There are three new housing items, the stuffed Estinian, four temp sofa, and the Iscardian display stand. Here it is with Sapphire Weapon on it. I'm not gonna buy them all to show you. Who do I look like, Mioni? I'm sure he has a video on them somewhere. The Modern Mog Seat and Moogle Round Table are previous Koopa of Fortune rewards. 
The third section is for materials, materia, and dyes. The only new things added are the step three and four oddly specific items used to upgrade Skysteel's tools. I believe these are only available if you are on one of those steps. New items in the Coupo of Fortune include Hres Hresvelger, the Hresvelger Attire Coffer, which contains an outfit fit for a dragon. Okay, not really, but I guess it's what he would wear if he were human? Unlike the Coffer of Coupos last time, you cannot sell the clothing items on the market board, only the Coffer itself. Once you open it, it's yours. The weatherproof Gale Cat might might be one of the cutest things ever. Then there is the Huggable Gailey Cat, which is a tabletop statue for your apartment. I'm certain this was added just to troll those hoping for the minion. Here is the Petite Pteranodon. The Calming Checkered Parasol is a blue version of the cheerful one. And the Ugly Duckling was previously only available from the Aquapolis. Keep in mind, almost all of the items sold and all of the rewards from Coupo of Fortune can be sold on the market board. I believe the only exception would be the cards. So if you don't want to craft and gather your brains out, check the market board. Around the end of Phase 2, a new quest appeared in the firmament from Foncrino. This starts a good-sized quest line with a touching story. At one point, other side quests become available, but I don't think those are required. Eventually, it leads to a couple blue quests that unlocks the Elto custom deliveries. This will only be available if you have a crafter at 70 and have completed inscrutable tastes from Morgane, Morgane in Ishgard and Go West Craftsman from Liderona. Liderona? Liderona. Liderona in Revenant's Toll. In the interest of equal opportunity employment and improving relations with the dragons, you and your friends teach Elto about crafting. These deliveries work just like any other custom deliveries. Like those, you can only make six deliveries a week. After a few weeks, you get a couple quests and are rewarded with this lovely mount. This is, this is now my favorite mount. She's so cute. She has her little hammer and her wee little hat. Sky Steel tools were added sometime in the second phase. These are kind of like artifact weapons for crafters. You get a tool and you upgrade it a bunch of times, and in the latest patch they added two more upgrade steps. I'm not going to get into all the details in this video, but here is a quick summation. At 80 you can pick up mislaid plans from the Sky Steel engineer just outside the firmament. You will be sent to the Sky Steel Manufactory, which is the machinist's guild and you will receive a coffer that contains a starter toolkit for your current crafting or gathering class. You can purchase any or all of the other starting tools for Gil if you like. Continue through the quest line to upgrade your tool. You just have to gather and craft a whole bunch of oddly specific doodads using your new tool and turn them in with your tool to get the upgrade. In the third and fourth steps, you will need to trade some of the items for special gobby goo. That seems redundant. The gathering ones are pretty straightforward as you just need to gather a specific amount of items and be sure to get high quality where it is required, though you do need special bait for fishing. For the crafter tools, you need to purchase some mats and craft others. The purchased mats are available from any script vendor under level 70 crafter items. These are a good thing to spend excess yellow crafter scripts on if you think you may want these tools. I had stacks of these in my inventory for months. Note that the items for the two new steps are also available from Eni in the firmament for Skybuilder scripts. One thing of note is that you need to have your Skysteel tool unequipped when you go to upgrade it. For the first two upgrade steps done through the vendor, you can simply switch to a different class or job. But on the third and fourth steps done through a quest, you need to have the tool unequipped and also need to be the correct class. So you need to purchase a cheap low level tool for the class you are working on so you can swap it out to complete the quest. Remember in 5.4, the fourth and likely final phase is coming. It'll probably be similar to this one, but I'm sure there will be a few surprises. There is some debate on whether this will actually lead to a new housing district. 
just because of that pesky fact that they never specifically said it would. What do you think? Personally, I hope it results in a better housing system. The current system is really poor and, and only seems to exist to cause strife. Anyways, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask below. And please subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. Goodbye.